Today I'm going to cover the process of taking this pile of roughs on walnut and turn it into the dining room table I frankly couldn't afford. So what I'm doing here is just trying to work out what pieces I want to use for this tabletop, getting a rough dimension on the width, and uh, from there I'll start milling it down. I picked up this walnut out of a barn that had been sitting there for quite a while. I only have an 8 inch benchtop joiner, and while it worked, a long bed joiner definitely would have been better. I used a couple of rolling miter stands to support the stock as I passed it through the joiner. The goal here is to end up with a right angle on an edge and a face of the stock. You'll see that come in handy as I reference those two surfaces on my table saw. The harder the wood, the fewer the teeth on your blade. For hardwoods, I like to use a 24 tooth blade. Once I had all the stock surfaced on three sides, I can take it over to my thickness planer and begin bringing them down to the final dimension. I aimed on this top for about one and a half inch thick here. Really wanted that nice beefy tabletop. Now that everything's milled up and surfaced on all four sides, I need to create some alignment aids to keep everything nice and flat. Luckily, a friend of mine owns a domino joiner. This is definitely a benefit as a standard biscuit or even a doll would work. The domino provides that extra level of strength and alignment. I started out with the dominoes every 12 inches. I utilized the domino joiner and put in the slot at the standard width. On the opposing side, there's a setting on the domino and I moved that into the medium width. This will provide some wiggle room as I assemble everything. For the glue up, I'm just using regular wood glue. This table will be inside, so no need for Type on 3 or anything like that. Uh, I always keep Type on 2 on hand. It's a great all around glue, served me well over the years. Making sure here when I put the glue on to apply an even coat across the edge of the board and into the domino slots. Once I had the glue spread around, I went ahead and inserted the dominoes into the standard size slots. I rested the top on 2x4s with duct tape over the edges as you can see. This will allow me to have a nice reference face as I assemble everything and tighten it and the duct tape on top of the tube is going to prevent the tabletop from actually gluing itself to whatever it's sitting on. Snugged everything together using my pipe clamps. I actually had to go buy longer lengths of pipe for this glue up. My pipe clamps were only 36 inches previously and I needed 48 to 52. So. I also added clamps on all the seams at the ends just to keep everything in place, squeeze it down flush. Now, while this dries up, we got to fabricate the base for the table. I'm at a different shop here, that's because I don't have the room in my shop to lay this out and make everything the way I need it to. Listed the help of a buddy here. Uh, Bart over at Comar Projects got a little bit more room in his shop than I do thankfully and he was kind enough to let me use some of his stuff to do this. I do have a welder and grinders and everything but he's got the nice abrasive chop saw and again a little bit more room to help assemble this. So I started out cutting the sticks in the lengths required for the X-frame design that my wife and I wanted. This whole project actually started because we found a table that we absolutely love but it was $7,000. No way could I afford that. So I pulled the old husband line out of the pocket. Honey, I can build that. You know, the salesman, he says he can, but will he? So I was kind of on the hook on this one. I have to deliver. Once I got everything cut to size, the next step was to tack up the center boxes that'll hold the connector beam for this table. I'm not a great welder, but a grinding wheel and Bondo does wonders. I went ahead and laid out the bottom half of the X shape that I was going for and tacked up everything, welded it all up. I repeated the shape on the other side to make a matching set. These ended up heavy. Uh, the 12 gauge, one and a half inch by four inch box steel that I picked up off Marketplace was no joke. I hauled these back to my shop after everything was welded up to finish the grinding. Using flap discs to clean up all the welds, still new at this whole video thing. And uh, I kind of forgot to take any actual footage of 
bondoing anything, sanding it, painting it. So go ahead and close your eyes and just imagine a great ASMR scene of all that happening. And it was really rewarding. And you want to subscribe and like my video. So with the legs all done, it was time to get the top ready to finish. I promise, I promise, I'll keep it short here. Key to a good finish, you've heard it a hundred times, it rings true to today, is work through the grits. I started with 80, I went to 120, then to 180, and then I finished it off with 220. Work through your grits, don't go 80 to 220. For the finish on this table, I opted for Total Bolt's Gleam 2.0 Marine Spar Varnish. I really like working with the Gleam for a couple of reasons. One, it's just a great, hard, awesome finish. Two, you can get up to three coats in a day in with recoats in as little as one hour. For this table, I actually applied four coats of the gloss followed by two coats of satin to achieve the desired luster I was looking for. Those coats of gloss underneath really make that wood grain and color shine through with the satin putting that nice, subtle finish on it that I wanted. With everything dry and ready for assembly, I enlisted the help of my wife to carry this tabletop inside. I attempted to do it myself and I almost broke. Like, not it, but myself. This thing weighs like 125 pounds and it is big. I attached the legs using quarter 20 bolts threaded into threaded inserts in the table. I opted out of utilizing C-channel here as the legs themselves are attached to the table and are metal. The beam is folded miter box joinery. So it looks natural, but it's really hollow. If anybody's interested in that process, drop a comment below. I'll put out a video on how to do that if anybody's interested. I absolutely love how this table turned out. And quite honestly, it's my favorite build to date. There was no way I was affording the $7,000 table that we fell in love with. And all in with material, I have about 600 bucks in this table. But I hope you guys liked the table. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a ton of fun building it. And again, I'm just thrilled with how this comes out. It's an heirloom piece of furniture that's going to last my family for generations. Thank you for taking time to watch. If you like this product, please let me know down below. Please consider subscribing. Click that bell notification. It'll let you know when I drop any new videos, put out any new tutorials or anything like that. It really would mean the world to me as I'm trying to grow this channel. So again, thanks for watching guys and go make something.